This cam is equipped with two decompressors. The function of the first one, which is located right here, is to keep the exhaust valve open a scotch during cranking RPMs. And then when the engine starts, this acts as a counterweight and it should keep that decompressor deactivated with help of centrifugal force pulling out on it. You can see this is the part right here that actually contacts the rocker face and keeps it the scotch open. So when it's deactivated, it will look like that. And now it wouldn't contact the rocker anymore. The secondary one is on the back and that is for reverse. So you can see if I spin it backwards, I can't hold it. It will spin backwards. And that's because it's on a sprag clutch that I'll show you when I take this apart. So spinning forward, it stays stationary. And then if it's to kick back, it will grab this and lift that rocker a touch open to decompress on a kickback. Here's a look at the spring-loaded pin that holds that secondary reverse decompressor in position. With the cam inside of the valve cover, we can see that the pad is contacted both. So this is the primary decompression, and right now it's in the activated state. So as I start to rotate it, you'll see it's actually lifting that rocker. Even though I'm holding finger pressure on the rocker, you can see it's now lifted it off from the main lobe. And then as it keeps going around, let's see, it should, if I hold some pressure on this, it should snap back. And right there. So now it's, it's dis deactivated and it should stay in that position if the engine starts uh, because this counterweight will fling up and keep it in the retracted position. And so remember, this one doesn't spin. It would be locked with the pin. But if it, if it did spin backwards, we'll show you what would happen. We can see, boom, this, the secondary one has caught this little pad that sticks off the pad that broke off the rocker and it's lifted the rocker off from the cam in its entirety. So uh, originally I thought that this might have contacted that pad as well, but we can see from this view it never does. This is the only part that contacts the rocker face and that the extension is for the secondary reverse decompression. The sprocket flange is a press fit on the cam and it is keyed as you can see right up top of here. So make sure you put that back on right. Beneath it you'll find a washer and then there's a good look at the sprag clutch. It has these spring loaded rollers so it can spin counterclockwise but cannot spin clockwise. Pulling that off so that, that's the secondary decompression. We'll pull that off. And that rides on this surface right here, which looks in good shape. And then here's a good look at the main decompression. So it has a spring on this side where my thumb is, a little detent that we'll talk about on the bottom, and then a detent on the top. This is the counterweight. This is the part that decompresses when it contacts the rocker. You can see that it sticks out just a little bit further than the flat part of the rocker on the bottom, unless it's in that... Um, Sorry about the focus here, unless it's in this state here. So when, when the engine starts, that counterweight should act to fly this out and keep it down. And then you can see the bottom, it, it's, it sits below the bottom of the surface. All right. And this little part here, I think, is what gets worn out. It's very hard to see any actual visual wear because you can only you can see the way the system is. I mean, all that hammering all the time, it's definitely going to wear the pin out and this piece out. Since this is a pretty failure-prone system, I was just reading it's common for guys to get rid of it all together and then weld up the uh, oil hole here so you don't have oil pressure bleeding out. Another good option is to just replace this entire camshaft. I looked it up. It's only 175 bucks, But you would want to replace all four of the rockers, too, at the same time if you're going to do that. If it were my engine, I would get rid of it and then put a manual decompression. You could actually machine this out. The casting's still there for the old-style uh, manual lever decompression, and even the rocker has the, the little pad on there for, for that. Here's the one on the XL. Much more reliable. Seems good.